So I've heard a lot about sad lamps and I've always thought, wow, that is so great. The lamps are exploring their full range of emotions. But then I learned that stands for seasonal affective disorder. When the plants die, the air grows cold and the world darkens. So the theory goes, your heart does too. And light, hypothetically, is supposed to help with that. When I struggled with mental illness, it was more of an every season kind of thing. And my mental health is in great shape now, so I can't speak to whether this will do anything for mental health. But my sleep patterns do change in the winter. They shift later as the sunrise gets later, and I don't like that. My favorite time to write is first thing in the morning before other people are awake. So I was curious if getting up and sitting in front of the lamp was going to trick my body into believing the sunrise is still happening at 6 a.m. So I set my alarm to get up every morning for a week to sit for 30 minutes under the light and read. I'm reading the Shobol Genzo by Dogen. It's partly a deep exploration of Zen philosophy and partly a collection of 13th century subtweets at monks for being bad at monk stuff. After a week, uh, here's what I noticed. So I've been testing out the Carex Daylight Classic Plus it retails for around say $150, $200 depending on where you get it. In terms of product, when it arrives, it came in three pieces. Um, the light box is kind of stand and then the base down here. It was super easy to assemble. The light box just slides on and off the stand in the back. It's quite light and then the base is weighted. So it looks like when you see it on a table, it looks like it could be very top heavy, but actually it's quite sturdy. The base uh, really holds it. There's, it's not, it never felt when I was using it and turning it on and off. It never felt like it was gonna like fall over or anything like that. Inside the light box, it's packing, I believe a set of three compact fluorescent light bulbs then generate 10,000 lux at 12 inches. If that number does not mean anything to you right now, don't worry, we're gonna come back to it, but remember that. As you could kind of see, in the hyperlapse videos there, it's it's quite bright when it's going. I kind of like that. Like it was enjoyable to sit by this really bright light and read. It's kind of, it felt like I was doing something. Uh, Cause there's also the possibility that if you drop the brightness down, you're actually taking it potentially out of the range where it could be effective according to what research has shown us. Let's talk about the visual aesthetics. They, they might be challenging for some with this particular light, but any kind of so-called evidence-based light in general, they will be larger. Uh, this, the light box itself is 16 inches by 13 inches. The whole lamp is 25 inches. That's around 63 centimeters tall. So when it's in a room, it's, it's a substantial centerpiece, potentially, particularly if you have, you know, say a smaller apartment or something like that. It's not exactly like you, you can put it somewhere and take it out each morning when you want to use it. Having said that, there are other models that uh, are arguably a little bit sleeker, uh, might fit with your decor better. Uh, Kerox has other models as well. Generally, though, you're going to be looking for something that is larger. What we're seeing in, in research that does suggest uh, some effect, it tends to involve a large light box. Now here's something curious, because if you're looking for the, one of these lights, generally you're going to go larger. But when I was looking at the lights that were popular on Amazon, I saw something curious, uh, curiously concerning. First off, since we were just talking about size, the most popular lights on Amazon are all relatively small compared to the sizes of light boxes we see getting used in research. So the best seller is six by seven inches. Uh, on the one suggested by Amazon, the light box is six by six inches. Several times smaller than the one that I was trying out. And do you remember that number I mentioned? 10,000 lux at 12 inches. You can see if you look at the lights on Amazon, almost all of them say 10,000 lux in their name. But notice that something's missing, the distance. See, lux is a measure of light intensity at a specific distance. Don't be fooled just by seeing that term 10,000 lux because nearly all of these lamps with 10,000 lux in their title are just doing that for SEO. The reality is you can say any light is 10,000 lux. A cheap light could be 10,000 lux 
but you have to hold the light up to your eyeball. So like, don't do that. But that's why they're able to get away with saying it's 10,000 lux. As long as you don't say the distance, it's technically true at some distance. Another strange thing I noticed online, a lot of these lights that are basically LEDs stuck on a small piece of plastic and sold for a high profit margin, they have excellent reviews. So I don't know, is there a strong placebo effect here? Is it the other stuff people are doing while they're sitting by the lights that helps? Is the research wrong? Or uh, is it because, as one reviewer pointed out, they were offered gift cards in exchange for leaving reviews? But I've got to say, we, we should do a lot of research on that. Somebody should do a research study where they give me gift cards every day, give me gift cards every day, and then, you know, for two months, and then, you know, we'll see. My hypothesis is that it would significantly improve my mood. In the meantime, let's go back to the experience I had while using the light box. Now, probably a super important question here to explore is, did I notice any effect uh, from sitting in front of this? Uh, no. Uh, so, right, I was, again, I mental health is great. There's no issues there, but I, I was really hoping I would, you know, shift that circadian rhythm. The thing is, as soon as I committed to waking up at six to read and record in front of the light, I did it. I enjoyed it. I will say that, like, I, I really enjoyed making that space each morning, first thing when I got up, to like, have some water, or some juice or something, and sit and read. And uh, that was great. So I will say that, and I'd be curious to see in the research, any research going on in this, uh, whether or not they really also look at um, a control condition where people just are making space uh, for, you know, kind of enjoying time by themselves or doing something that also could be beneficial. Because uh, for me, that was the big bonus. Like, I'm just enjoying making space in the mornings. And that, that was a great lesson. It just it really reminded me of how valuable it is to know that first thing we're going to do when we wake up. Uh, later in the winter, after I had stopped using this, I was uh, facilitating some workshops in the UK online. But because the audience was, the participants were in the UK, I had to get up at 4 a.m. And uh, I was, I was a bit concerned. I was like, oh no, like, uh, my brain really wants to sleep. But of course, when, when you have an interesting purpose to do and get up for, uh, it was really no problem to get up. So all in all, uh, thanks uh, to this bright light, I really learned the value of uh, waking up with a purpose first thing in the morning, even in the darkness of winter. So that was my experience with it. I know uh, a lot of people have asked about light therapy and have mentioned trying them as well. So I'd be really curious uh, in the comments down below, share any experiences you've had with light therapy lamps uh, or anything like that at all and um, I'll continue enjoying my morning reading. I hope you're enjoying your mornings as well even as we get into spring now or fall depending on which part of the world you're in.